Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today we're going to take a look at this guy, the Zoom H6, and how you can create a very professional sounding podcast using this little guy right here. So let's take a look. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into this video, and if it is your first time here, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to give you notifications on when we upload a new video. So yes, this is the Zoom H6, and this is something that I've had for just a little while here. I did an unboxing video a while back, and then we did, I think in one of our live streams, we were showing, I was showing you how I was using this to get all my audio in. Most importantly, we wanna see how we can use this guy to create a professional sounding podcast uh, for any application, and you could be all by yourself, or you can have up to five additional people with you on the podcast. So we'll take a look at that and how to set everything up and how to get good levels and how to record everything. One of the great things about using a handheld recorder like this guy right here is that it records isolated tracks for each microphone that you plug in. That includes all four here, and if you have the capsule on the top, you can record two more mics or a stereo line input slash like lav mic input. That gives you the ability to take all of those tracks, pull them into a DAW and edit them and mix them down exactly how you want them to create a more professional sounding podcast. Now, while this isn't a mixing console, which gives you a lot of those features on the fly, it has a couple of settings on it that can give you a pretty decent sound if this is all you have. So you can take what you're recording and send it out to, let's say, a live stream. Currently, we have this microphone plugged in and it is recording my shotgun mic right above me right here. So it is doing its job right now. And we're gonna plug in uh, a, a few uh, dynamic microphones here and see how they react and if they're the best thing to use. And you can do this, I'm not gonna say cheap because this is 300 bucks, but it's not a whole lot. It's something that you can definitely purchase this in a microphone and then work your way up from there. One of the great things about the H6 now is the price. Because they just released the H8, these have actually been pretty cheap. I bought this one for under 300 bucks. And if you look online right now, it's gonna be about that 300 mark. A lot of people are selling them with accessories. So it'll be three to 350. A word of advice is buy the regular one. Don't buy the blackout one. The blackout one doesn't come with all the accessories. You're only gonna get the XY capsule on top and that is it. This particular one, the regular one, comes with the XY capsule on top. It comes with a mid-side capsule. It comes with a USB cable. It comes with a windscreen for the XY capsule and a carrying case to put it all in. The black one doesn't come with all of that. So be sure just to get the regular version. This particular recorder, while it's not the smallest out there, it's pretty compact. I mean, you can you know, throw it into one of these little cases here and chuck it in your backpack and go. You don't need to, to use the included carrying case. You can just mic pouch and be done. Pretty cool. Now, whether you get this regular one or the blackout version, it does come with this little guy, the XY capsule. And this, if we throw... On the left side here, it has a headphone jack, and that's obviously for monitoring through headphones. So when you're recording, you can have all your microphones coming through and you're hearing a basic mix coming out of the headphone jack. And that exact same mix is being mirrored on the bottom here on the line output. And the mix for this, and also for the headphone jack, can be controlled on an internal mixer here. It's not super convenient. It's kind of a mix to uh, set and forget but it does give you the functionality and it has pan control and volume control, which is very nice. So let's go over just a few features that the H6 has on its front panel that can allow us to quickly record, stop, and adjust volume when needed. At the top here, we have our gain adjustments for all four of the microphone inputs that are on the side here. And these particular preamps also have a minus 20 dB pad. Surprisingly, even a lot of uh, professional, semi-professional mixers don't have a pad on it. This allows you to have a mic that's, if it's overly hot or something like that, you can easily just pad it down by 20 dB and then make up the gain uh, with the gain knob. Below that, we have what's called our record arm buttons. Left to right, which 
corresponds with the capsule that will be on the top here. And then microphone one, two, three, and four. Now before you start recording, you must hit these and they turn red like this. One, two, three, and four, just like that. And if we had a capsule plugged in right now, those would light up. Now below that you have your normal transport controls, which are your record, play, pause, stop, fast forward, rewind. Below that we have this fully colored screen that gives us a lot of information, including our levels here and also um, our mix levels. If you can see those little faders and those pan knobs right there. And then it also gives us the indication on whether, for instance, on here it has phantom power engaged, a compressor engaged, and a high pass filter. You can also see what you're recording at. For instance, we're recording at WAV 48K 24 bit, and we do have phantom power engaged on that first mic or input number one. It also shows you down here how much record time you have left. And unfortunately, we only have 122 hours left to record, so we better wrap this up pretty quick. You can also see that uh, I'm gonna record enable, and you can see that which tracks are record enabled because their numbers light up red. So as I turn them off, or their numbers go back to gray. So here's our setup. We're gonna have three microphones plugged in. We have the SM7B, which is standard, one of the standard podcast mics out there. Then we've got two SM58s. And the reason I'm doing this is because we wanna see how it would sound if we bought a really nice SM7B for us as the host, and then a couple of cheaper SM58s for our guests. In addition to this, we're also running the H6 uh, some power, so we don't have to rely solely on battery power. We're also running an output here out of our line output, and I'm recording that elsewhere so that we can hear how it sounds. So let's zoom in and get some levels on these microphones. So now let's get some levels on these microphones. We're gonna start with the SM7, and you're gonna watch on uh, channel one here. We're gonna turn it up and get a good uh, level on that mic. One, two, hey, hey, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two, one, two, check, check. Hey, 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 hey. And we're gonna watch that, and we want it to be in that, uh, you know, minus six to minus 12 area. Check, check, one, two. Hey, 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 check, check. We don't want our peaks being any higher than that uh, because we want it to sound, you know, good. So we've got a good level there, I think, on the SM7. So let's jump to our 58s. One, two. Hey, hey. And this one's on channel two. So we're going to bring that up. Hey, hey, check, check. One, two. Hey, hey, same thing. Hey, hey, one, two, one, two. Hey, 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 check, check. Hey, hey. If it's a little hot, that's okay uh, because we're going to, apply a compressor on this in just a minute. Let's go to the next one. Second SM58 on channel three. Hey, hey, and I can match that gain pretty close to what I did on the first one. There we go, check, check, hey, hey. All right, so now we have level across all three of these microphones. But now we're gonna jump in and apply some compression, apply a high pass filter, and see if we can get a good sound for broadcast. So you can't be recording when you are setting compressors and your uh, high pass filters. So we stopped recording here and now we're gonna go into the menu and we're gonna come into our microphone here and we're gonna go to compressor limiter. And let's go to track one. And now I've got the SM7B here. Check, check, one, two. And you'll see that when I jump to these different, we've got three different compressors. I wouldn't do a limiter, those are more for overall mix, so just be careful on that. This is how it sounds without without any compression on it. It's actually pretty good, I'm, I'm surprised. This is a good microphone, the SM7, so I'm actually surprised, or not surprised, it's pretty good. So let's jump to compression one, and there's our general compression, and that's, that's a little, that's quite a bit for me, but uh, let's jump to two, which is the vocal. Check, check, one, two. That seems a little bit better for me. Let's go to drums. Drums is like super compressed. So if I come on here, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty much smashing it. So I would suggest comp two for vocals. So we'll go ahead and bring that in. I'm just gonna do that on all of them. Comp two and track three, comp two. Okay, so now we have the, now we have the comp 
on the compressor on all three channels. We're gonna go into the low cut and we're gonna apply a low cut at about 133 hertz. That'll still give us some low end in the microphones, but take out any extra rumble that we might run into. So we'll just set those and I think we're good. Now this will give us a good overall sound which we can then send out of our line output down here at the bottom. So as we can see, we have a pretty good level on these microphones between all of them. So this is mic two, this is mic three, this is the SM7. The SM7 is going to sound better. It has some controls on the back as well to cut low end, boost high end, so we're pretty good. Hey, hey, one, two, so it sounds pretty good. I'm happy with that. This would be a good feed to send out to an ATEM Mini or something like that. We've got good level across all of them, and it sounds pretty good. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the volume and show you exactly where, uh, if you've got a guest that's a little hotter than someone else and they're just louder overall. So we're going to go back into the menu here, and we're going to go to our microphone icon there, and we're going to go down to the monitor mixer. And the monitor mixer is going to give us uh, the ability to mix uh, as far as pan goes and uh, level goes. Now we probably won't do much on pan and you can tell when you go into this mixer, you can now hear each of your individual mics uh, without um, hitting record or record arming them. So now we can scroll through. As I was saying earlier, you can see where it's highlighted in red where you go through each of these. And I can come to uh, the SM7 here and I can talk into it and, and adjust the level. So if I want this one to be a little more prominent, I can turn it up quite a bit uh, or I can keep it down at zero dB. And then I tap the button on the side of our control and then I can still, and then I can scroll through the rest of them here. So that's the that's way you would adjust it. So for instance, on this guy, I'm at minus 4.5 dB. So I wanna bring that guy up to zero dB. So now, now we're even across all of them. So mic three is at zero dB as well. And so that gives us a good starting point. Then you can adjust up and down from there. If you really wanna do pan, you can. You can take any of these uh, pan encoders. I call them encoders if you want to call them faders or whatever. Uh, you can fade left, right if you want. So that will actually give us a pretty good mix between each of our microphones. So everybody should sound pretty good. If you need to adjust something, because like I said earlier, this is something that you set and then you forget it. You can't come in here when you're actually tracking the podcast. So if somebody is a little quieter or a little too loud during the podcast and you need to adjust, then as much as I don't want to say it, you need to use the gain knobs up here. It is gaining down the preamp, but usually you're just adjusting something down slightly. So it won't be that big of a deal. I think that uh, you'll be able to get away with it. You'll still have a good strong sound. You'll still have your comp and your uh, high pass filter in place. So. Shouldn't have to worry about that. The last thing I want to show you is the ability to also include music in your podcast. And this is especially good when you are sending this out to a stream. So we can use an iPad here, plus our H6, plus the capsule up top in order to get the music in. And we're using a program here called the Go Button, which is by the same guys who make QLab, figure 53. But all I've done here is I have the headphone out down here an eighth inch output running into the eighth inch input up here on our uh, capsule. And it's recognizing it as a line level signal because you can also plug mic level in there. And so what we're gonna do is we will go ahead and let's start, uh, let's see, let's start some music here and we'll just slowly turn it up. Yeah, that's actually not a lot. I mean, we could even turn We could even turn this down a little bit on the iPad, so we're only at about half volume, and then bring this up a little bit. 
then you could come in here like this. So now I'm on the SM7 with some music behind me, right? And they've got a bunch of cool things you could do, like we'll go out and fade out two and fade in four, so now or three. So now we've got the next uh, kind of bumper music running. And then I've set out, I've set up this slow fade uh, button here where I can just have it go. Let's say it's coming in here. All right, welcome everybody. Yeah, yeah. Check, check. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And then I can hit the slow fade. It kind of does a slow fade out underneath me like this. And then I can go into my podcast and we can talk about A, B, and C and who's doing this and who's doing that and what's up and what's going down. And that's that's pretty much it. It'll just slowly fade out that music over time. And it's all something stuff you can do in this Go Button app. And it's free. That's the crazy part. So that gives us all three microphones that we had plugged in, plus our music coming in. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. It's, you know, I, and then I can do something like this where I dim the music down. And then let's say I'm going out and I hit that button. Go for. And I've got that music underneath heading out. Actually, let's do, this is a good one. Let's pause. And then we'll go seven. I want to stop all cues. I'm going to stop all cues. And then we're going to go to, let's see. We'll go to this cue here. And then let's say it's the end of the show. I dim it down there and then I go, well, that's all the time we have today, guys. We'll see you next time where we're going to do this and that and this. And we'll see you then. You can even come up here and adjust the level up a little bit on here. Because our levels over here aren't that bit, aren't that loud. So we can kind of mix a little bit from up in this area, which is very really nice. And that's that. Yep. And then we can do a slow fade out. And then I'll take it out to the end of the show. And that's it. That's how you would do your podcast with the H6. Well, guys, I want to thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you can. Now go and get the proper equipment to make your podcast sound amazing and that you guys can have some success in creating content, which is what we love to do here. If you did like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps us out a lot. Uh, consider subscribing and turning that bell on because that'll notify you uh, when we are uploading a new video. And also consider following us on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we post a few things there throughout the week and try to stay up to date with you guys. Uh, especially when we're doing a live stream. We're trying to do them fairly consistent. Uh, there's been a couple couple weeks that we missed, but we're trying to stay consistent with that. But that's the easiest way to find out when we're doing a live stream is to follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Also, I'm gonna list everything down below that we have used in this video. Those are affiliated links, so I get a little bit of a cut uh, at no extra cost to you. So if you use those, that helps in supporting our channel. Again, thanks guys for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.